Welcome to Addicted to Real Estate TV. On today's episode, we're going to discuss when the market goes south, so do we. So stick around, I got some great info for you. To say you gotta know somebody, or know somebody, to get somewhere these days. To say you know that's alright, yeah that's alright. Hi, I'm your host of Addicted to Real Estate TV, Phil Falcone, with a special guest today, Jeremy Ricci. Today's episode was sponsored by Realty Mark 100, where real estate agents can, for $100 a month, keep 100% of their commission. That's right, you're not hearing things. 100% commission. Give them a call at the phone number above or the website below. Today we want to talk a little bit about where markets are going south, okay? and why we want to go there. So we've decided that we're expanding our operation into Florida and we want to share that with you. Basically we've done a lot of research on it and the top 10 worst real estate markets in the United States. I'm talking about the 10 cities that have been hit the worst by this economic downturn in the real estate market. Three of them are in Florida. Three of them. What are those three? Uh, good question. One of them is Miami. Okay. Uh, I've been to Miami many times. I just don't know that that's the right place for me to be investing. One of them is uh, Cape Coral. Okay. That's another place that I like, but uh, I'll call it my second choice of cities in Florida. The one I think I like the most is Sarasota. Um, I just spent uh, a week out there doing some research in Sarasota, and the deals are flat out amazing in that city. So Jeremy and I are, are, are really getting ready to gear up and go down there and make some moves. Sarasota has, you know, it's on the west coast, it has great weather, it has the Gulf Ocean, which is beautiful, the beaches are tremendous, and the houses are, you know, mostly ranchers, uh, and some are in good shape, some are in bad, but the deals are tremendous. I mean, we've basically calculated that the kind of houses that you're buying down there are somewhere between uh, half the price that those houses would be here to even one-third of the price that houses would be here. Okay, so there's amazing opportunity in Sarasota, and that's definitely the place that we're thinking of expanding in. Now, I bought last year, I bought a house on the ocean side, uh, just north of West Palm Beach. And one of the things that works to your advantage down there is there's a high amount of unemployment. And a lot of the housing growth down there was surrounded around the construction industry and building new houses. So if all the jobs are around construction and construction stops, what happens? You have a bunch of people that live there that can't afford to live there. So you have a, a mass exodus, there's a lot high foreclosure rate, all those foreclosures are pushing down the price of houses. And there's also a lot of other factors that contribute to that. So m part of my strategy was trying to find out where can I invest where people can afford to be in those houses. And there's two things that, that Phil, you had uh, shared with me that I, I agreed with, is that if you try to get houses where you're not looking for people that have jobs locally, one of the things that I was, I was looking at is uh, I bought an area where people could live and then commute to an area there was jobs. So we also talked about vacation rentals, the idea that people want to be down in Florida. In the winter months up here, we're in the Northeast. In the winter months, people want to be down in Florida. So if we just did weekly rentals, now obviously it's more management intensive, so we, maybe we pay a property manager, but, but doing weekly rentals, we can get people that have jobs from up in the Northeast to other parts where it's colder, mm -hmm. and down in the wintertime, and then tell them a little bit about why you picked uh, Port St. Lucie on the East Coast. Yeah, I was in Port St. Lucie mainly because all the Port St. Lucie jobs were, under, were, were based on the housing industry. Although you had West Palm Beach where a lot of the jobs were, the people that work in the service industries, let's say, c couldn't afford to live in West Palm Beach, but that's where the jobs were. So, right, so 20 minutes north, they could afford to live. 20 minutes north, there's plenty right. of housing stock, and I strategically picked a place where there's a brand new I-95 interchange and I looked within one mile of that interchange, and I made offers on houses like crazy down there to look for really good deals. I mean, let me just go over the numbers. You could buy a house down there for 40, 50 grand. That's only three or four year old construction. So three or four year old construction. I mean, there's practically still warranties on the appliances in yeah, there. We're talking ranchers. We're talking three bedroom, two bath ranchers with a garage. Yeah, in Florida, the, the style of home is always mostly single story homes. Now, you know, think about it, it's hot. You know, you got to keep something cool. So the best place, best way to keep something cool is keep it all on the first floor. So these houses were concrete block construction, which is really important. 
because there's hurricanes. So you want to stay away from the uh, stick-built homes, what they call stick-built homes, which are what we have up mostly in the Northeast. And the Chinese drywall. Uh, and there's Chinese defective drywall. That's a, another thing that you really want to steer clear of unless you know what you're doing, where you have to rip out all the drywall in the house or some, some, some problems, that, really big problems that that causes. It eats away at your pipes, eats away at your copper in your electrical lines. So I steer clear of anything that had Chinese drywall. I got a, a lot of contracts on places that had it, but once I found out that it was in there, I backed out of those contracts, got my money back. So the, uh, the other thing that's, that's really important, I think, about you know, having the, the income, the sustainable income in order to afford these houses is um, the other thing that's coming up is you have all these baby boomers that are about to get into the retirement stage. So as they're ready to retire, they want, they'd like to go to places where they can golf, places where the, there's nice weather, where there's beaches, where there's all these things. And I think Florida is a great place. You can buy it at really low prices, like I was saying. I mean, we're looking at houses that are in the $50,000 range that you could rent annually for about $1,000 a month. Now, let's say we, we stuck to beach areas and we did vacation rentals. Well, eventually, there might be people that down the road, when those prices get, get back up there, that we could sell to baby boomers who want to retire. Yeah, so I mean, was, you know, the, the biggest concern for me in the entire state is the high unemployment, okay? That really bothers me, all right? Vacation rentals avoid the high unemployment because you're not even renting to people from Florida. You're renting to people from all over the country, okay? So that solves that problem, and they're, most of the time they're just coming down there for the winter or whatever, all right? But the, the seniors thing affects all markets, not just sure. the vacation rental. It affects the entire state, and I think that that's... Um, you know, that's a great way to combat the high unemployment. The high unemployment is a big concern right now, but the seniors thing is going to bring more upside potential to that area than anywhere. So we wanted to share this strategy with you. It's definitely something that we're uh, very, very serious about. We started bidding on properties down there, and uh, this time next year wouldn't be surprised if we have half a dozen down there, maybe more. So this is an area that we're really focusing on, and if you're an investor who owns properties in Florida right now, in any of these areas, or anywhere in Florida, we'd love to hear your comments. You can put a comment right below this video. We'd love to see that. If you're an investor who's interested in investing down there, certainly you know, put it on there. Let's start talking, because uh, it's, it's an area that we're going to start going to on a regular basis, and we're going to really get serious about making some moves down there. In the end, the main reason is, Look, we can buy houses up here all day long. We've been doing that our whole lives, and we're making money off of it. We're building wealth. But you have to ask yourself a question. Can I do the exact same strategies that I'm doing here in Florida and maybe add 30%, 40% to my bottom line just because of the amazing opportunities down there? We believe that you can. So we want to share that with you. And, uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're just watching this show for the first time, Go to my website, addictedtorealestate.com. You can pick up a copy of my book there, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. You can sign up for this free web TV show, which is an excellent resource for real estate investors who want to learn some of the things that uh, professional investors like Jeremy and myself are doing. And uh, make sure you sign up for my web TV show. Make sure you pick up a copy of the book. And let's get busy buying. See you in Florida. Thanks.